So last time out, I did a video on the absolutely heartbreaking end to the 2016 Le Mans 24 hours when the Toyota that was leading the race broke down with just one lap remaining. And I said it was the most messed up ending to a Le Mans 24 hours since the 1966 event when the car that won didn't actually win. Or did it? So Le Mans 1966, Ford versus Ferrari. You've probably watched the film, and I haven't because I don't particularly enjoy historical films because I know what's going to happen. But in that, you'll know the long and short of the story. Ford tried to buy Ferrari, Enzo told them vaffanculo, and the executives went back to Detroit and said, right, we're going to go to Le Mans, and we're going to kick his ass. And then they reverse engineered a Lola to become one of my favourite racing cars of all time, the Ford GT40. And while the Ford in 1965 wasn't particularly great and they had many teething issues, they turned up to the 1966 Le Mans 24 hours and tried to enter as many cars as they possibly could. Because, you know, if you throw enough fecal matter at a wall, eventually some of it is going to stick. And in the end, the ACO allowed a maximum of 13 Ford GT40s to enter the race. Either way, they were there to batter Ferrari, no matter what. As long as one of them beat Enzo, that was enough. And after the previous year, Ford had to win. One of the Ford bosses, a man called Leo Beebe, had actually received a handwritten note from Henry Ford II saying, you had better win. And it was sweaty time in the Ford camp, because Ken Miles at the start of the race had to pit because his door wouldn't shut properly, and then on the next lap out of the pits, he'd set a lap record, and then started setting lap records every time he got in the car, indicating that he was driving faster than Ford wanted him to drive. Another car driven by Dan Gurney came into the pits with the water temperature off the charts and a head gasket blown. He too had been driving too hard. But in the car driven by Bruce McLaren and Chris Amon, they were driving too slow. That car was running on Firestone tyres and the intermediate tyres they had brought along were terrible and McLaren was bringing the car in for tyre changes with the tread completely ripped off. This had totally screwed that car's strategy, so McLaren held talks with Firestone and Firestone agreed to allow McLaren to swap the Firestone intermediates for the Goodyear ones, which worked better. Then in his frustration, he leaned into the car as Eamon was getting buckled in and shouted, go like hell. Now Ford had two cars on track that were driving too fast. And while four GTs were dropping one by one spaced out over the course of the race, there were still three remaining come the final hour of the 24 hours. One was being driven by Ronnie Bucknam and Dick Hutchison and was running in third place, 12 laps off the lead, and the other two were both on the same lap. One was driven by Kiwis Bruce McLaren and Chris Amon, and the other driven by 1967 Formula One world champion Denny Holm, and a bloke from Birmingham called Ken Miles. Four was in a bit of a pickle. They'd got cars in one, two, and three, but a fourth had blown a head gasket trying to race Ken Miles, so they had to try and do something to make sure that Ford won the race. So begins a bit of manufacturing behind the scenes. BB, who was Ford's racing director, started to manufacture a dead heat photo finish, and this would have been the perfect opportunity for Ford in terms of marketing. And all three cars crossing the line before a Ferrari? Even better. And at one point in the race, a sign went out for the two leading Fords to slow down and hold station. They were the only cars on the lead lap. Somehow the McLaren car had clawed it all back again. The other Ford in third was well off and the lead Ferrari was so far back that the Fords just had to finish. So the order was for all three of them to slow down. And Eamon did. But Holm didn't see the order or he ignored it and continued to drive at 100%. And at some point he caught and overtook McLaren which upset the Ford garages as the plan was starting to fall apart. And if they started racing each other, they might end up with nothing. At the final pit stops, Ken was told what was going to happen. He'd slow down, they'd have a photo finish, get all the pictures they need for the publicity, it'd be a dead heat and both his car and the other car would be declared the winners. Now Miles wasn't too happy about slowing down, but since his car and the other one would both win, he went along with it. But when he drove off, one of the Ford guys went up to the organisers and explained what they wanted to do. But the ACO basically said, we've never had a dead heat at Le Mans before, and we're not having one now. So in the closing seconds, all three Fords crossed the line together. Well, I say together, the first and second place cars crossed the line together, with the third in close behind. Ford had destroyed Ferrari and won Le Mans. Ford was happy, but for Miles and Hulme they were about to not be happy. Because when they reached the winner's enclosure, the French official said something along the lines of non 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 McLaren and Eamon. 
indicating that it was the number two Ford that needed to be parked in the winner's circle and not the number one Ford that had crossed the line at the same time as the number two. So who had won? Because they'd crossed the line together, right? But they hadn't. And I'm about to show you a mock-up I've made of the finish of that race. And if you look at an actual picture of the finish as they cross the line with the man waving the checkered flag, you'll notice that the Eamon and McLaren car is actually ahead of the Denny Hulme and Ken Miles car. Yeah, Miles loses either way. Eamon and McLaren are clearly ahead as they came across the line because Miles had lifted off to allow the number two car to take the victory. Now the common belief here is that they crossed the line at the same time and Eamon was gifted the win because he'd started further back on the grid, but nope. The black number two Ford GT40 crosses the line first. And after the race, Miles was seen talking to his head engineer and he said something along the lines of, we've been fucked here. So travelled further rule or crossing the line first rule, Miles loses the race either way. Now there are different stories based on how it all went down. The first is that BB was annoyed that Holm and Miles had defied orders to hold station and ordered the photo finish to screw them, knowing that this would actually happen. There is also the theory that being told the photo finish wouldn't work, they carried on with it to screw Miles and Hulme for not listening anyway. But the one that is most likely true is that it didn't matter who crossed the line first, whether it was Miles, McLaren, Graham Hill, Dan Gurney or whoever, so long as it was a Ford that crossed the line first, they didn't care. Ford wins Le Mans was going to be the storyline. Not McLaren wins Le Mans, not Miles wins Le Mans, Ford wins Le Mans. Or to put it into better language for Ford, Ford beats Ferrari. And like I say, find a picture as those cars cross the line. The number two crosses the line first. I know there is the whole Ken Miles is the real winner of Le Mans 1966, but since McLaren's car crosses the line first, no he isn't. And this was actually new for me too, because I always thought they crossed the line closer than they actually did. But if you look at the pictures, it's blatantly obvious that Eamon and McLaren are the winners. And it is a bit sad because Miles would be killed testing a Ford just two months later at Riverside and being screwed out of the Le Mans 1966 win meant he wasn't the first man to win the Triple Crown of Endurance Racing in one calendar year. But the ending to Le Mans 1966 still remains one of the biggest ends to a race ever. So then, a quick video explaining the circumstances surround Ken Miles' lost 1966 Le Mans victory. If this has been something new for you, then be sure to give the video and like. And if you want more stuff like this, get subscribed and also get that bell on so you never miss out on a future video. Massive thanks to the good folk over at Patreon. And if you want to help support the Image Fund, you can help out by following the link in the description, where there will also be links to Discord and also to my socials. So until next time, I've been Ada Moore. Have a great day wherever you live in the world, and I'll see you all again soon for another video. Goodbye.